Hi everyone, this is Melissa Homner with Sagebrush Wellness and I'm so, so, so excited to share this class with you. We're going to be discussing the mysteries of the thyroid. So please take a moment to turn off any conflicting media, uh, put your phone on silent, and focus in on the material that we're going to be sharing. Find a really cozy, comfortable place to sit and set your intention for this class today. What do you really want to learn? What made you sign up for this class? You're here because you want to become empowered with information that can affect your health in a big way. This class is being recorded, so if you want to copy for yourself or to be able to share it with someone you love, you will have an opportunity to request that at the end of the presentation. So grab a pen and paper or some way to take notes. I'm going to be moving through the information pretty quickly and will not be taking questions live during the presentation. At the end of this presentation, I will be going to the Sagebrush Wellness Facebook page and doing a live Q&A. As we go through the material, please jot down questions you have and ask them in the comments during the live Q&A. We have a ton of material to cover, so let's dive in. Welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me today. If we've not met yet, my name is Melissa Homner. I, I'm a functional medicine health coach who helps individuals suffering from chronic fatigue and debilitating pain find pain relief and energy without expensive therapies or meds. I'm a seasoned coach who has dealt with a wide range of disease dynamics and it's my honor today to share with you the mysteries of the thyroid. Let's talk today, right now, about what the actual thyroid is and where it's located. The thyroid gland is located in front of the trachea, more commonly known as the windpipe, and just below the larynx or the Adam's apple in the neck. The shape of the thyroid is similar to a butterfly with two halves or lobes. The portions are connected by a band of thyroid tissue called the isthmus. The loose connective tissue allows the thyroid to move and change position while we swallow. Interestingly, the thyroid is developed in the back of the tongue and has to migrate to the front of the neck before birth. On average, the thyroid weighs between 20 and 60 grams. That's up to two ounces. Each lobe contains a high number of small sacs called follicles, which store thyroid hormones in the form of tiny, tiny droplets. To understand the thyroid gland, it's essential to discuss the endocrine system. The endocrine system is a collection of glands that produce hormones that regulate metabolism, growth and development, tissue function, sexual function, reproduction, sleep, mood, among other things. In addition to the thyroid, the pituitary gland, the parathyroid glands, adrenal glands, pancreas, ovaries and gals, and testicles and guys all make up the endocrine system. Each gland of the endocrine system stores hormones to be released into the bloodstream and transferred into the body cells. This is where we get to see the magic of what hormones actually do. They're literally the messengers between cells in every part of our bodies. They're constantly moving, sending and receiving signals about the status of our world, informing our bodies on a moment by moment basis how to act and react to our world. I would like this next tip to really, really sink in. Our thoughts matter. Stress, whether it's emotional stress from a fight with someone you love, work stuff, financial stress, anything that causes your body to tense up is a sign that your body's asking for a surge of protective hormones to help your body be in a state of readiness to fight or run. Stress can also be a food sensitivity or a virus that is hanging out in your body. It can, it can be a low-lying infection, heavy metal toxicity, or even parasites. Any of these things can trigger your body to ask for more stress hormones to be made to help your body deal with the stressor. 
if this is a chronic situation or if your body believes that you are at risk, this is where the imbalance of hormones can begin. Your thoughts matter. Your choices matter. How you choose to view your world matters. And I know some of this is getting really technical, but I want you to really hang in here and, and really understand how every, like your actual glandular system is put together. Because when we get into the second part of this webinar, that is really going to give us some down to earth, basic practical ways to address imbalance in the thyroid, it's gonna make more sense. All right, so. The thyroid gland uses iodine to make two main hormones. One is T3 and the other is T4. To a lesser extent, the thyroid also produces calcitonin, which helps control blood calcium levels. The body cannot make the mineral iodine, which is why it is required to come in through the diet. Iodine is absorbed into our bloodstream from the food. It is then carried to the thyroid gland where it is eventually used to make thyroid hormone. Thyroid cells are unique in that they are highly specialized to absorb and use this iodine. It is one of the hardest minerals for our bodies to uptake, to actually absorb. If there's a disturbance in the digestive tract or if there's inflammation, not only is iodine uptake going to be compromised, but general nutrient absorption is going to be impaired as well. As we progress through this material, you're going to begin seeing how our bodies are beautifully interconnected and every system is interdependent. So thyroidoxine is called T4 because it contains four iodine atoms. To exert its effects, T4 is converted into T3 by the removal of one iodine atom. A thyroid that is functioning normally produces approximately 80% T4 and about 20% T3, though T3 is the stronger of the pair. T3 and T4 travel in your bloodstream to reach almost every cell in the body to regulate the speed with which the cell's metabolism works. For example, T3 and T4 regulate your heart rate and how fast your intestines process food. So if T3 and T4 levels are low, your heart rate may be slower than normal and you may have constipation and weight gain. If T3 and T4 levels are high, you may have a rapid heart rate and diarrhea or weight loss issues. <clears throat> Excuse me. The pituitary gland and the hypothymus both control the thyroid. When thyroid hormone levels drop too low, the hypothalamus, located at the base of the brain, secretes a hormone alerting the pituitary gland to produce thyroid stimulating hormone, which is, we know it better as TSH. That's what you're gonna see on your blood test results. The thyroid responds to this change of events by producing more hormones. The amount of TSH that the pituitary sends into the bloodstream depends on the amount of T4 that the pituitary sees. And once the T4 in the blood goes above a certain level, the production of, the production of TSH is shut off. So if we, let's put this into like a picture or a story. So you can imagine this cycle is like a, a heater in a thermostat. So when the heater is off and it becomes cold, the thermostat reads the temperature and turns on the heater. When the heat rises to an appropriate level, the thermostat senses this and turns off the heater. Thus, the thyroid and the pituitary, like a heater and thermostat, turn on and off. As you can see, if the system breaks down, even if <clears throat> pardon me, the TSH is being pumped out by the pituitary gland, <clears throat> forgive me, and the thyroid is not able to respond or over responds, we have a real problem. And this is where we start digging into what is not working correctly and start asking why questions. People with an overactive active thyroid have a condition called hyperthyroidism. Excess amounts of T3 and T4 are produced and released 
causing disru disruptions throughout the body. So some of the symptoms of hyperthyroidism include the following, fatigue or muscle weakness, hand tremors, mood swings, nervousness or anxiety, rapid heartbeat, heart palpitations or irregular heartbeat, skin dryness, trouble sleeping, weight loss, increased frequency of bowel movements. For gals, it can mean light periods or skipping periods. So hyper, hypo, let's talk about this one. Hypothyroidism is just the opposite. Too little T3 and T4. Approximately 10 million Americans are likely to have this common medical condition. In fact, as many as 10% of women may have some degree of thyroid hormone deficiency. So here are some of the symptoms for hypothyroidism. Fatigue, weakness, weight gain or increased difficulty losing weight, coarse dry hair, dry rough pale skin, hair loss, cold intolerance, which means you can't tolerate cold temperatures like those around you, muscle cramps and frequent muscle aches, constipation, depression, irritability, memory loss, abnormal menstrual cycles, often these will be on the heavier side, and decreased li libido. <clears throat> Several conditions can result from the abnormal function of the thyroid. In addition to hyper, and hypothyroidism, the following conditions can occur. Let's talk about a goiter. A goiter is a bulge in the neck. A toxic goiter is associated with hyperthyroidism and a non-toxic goiter, also known as a simple or endemic goiter, is caused generally by iodine deficiency. Another one is thyroiditis. So thyroiditis is an inflammation of the thyroid that can be associated with hyperthyroidism. Its in, uh, inflammation can cause the thyroid cells to die, making the thyroid unable to produce enough hormones to maintain the body's normal metabolism. Finding the source of the inflammation in the body is key to allowing the body to recover. The third one I wanna cover quickly with you is thyroid cancer. Thyroid cancer is relatively common and, a long, and the long-term survival rates are quite excellent, especially when addressed using the whole body approach. Thyroid cancer can affect anyone at any age, though women and people over 30 are most likely to develop the condition. As you now know, the thyroid gland is where the production and secretion of the hormones T3 and T4 take place. But what are the functions of the thyroid? The thyroid is responsible for regulating the body's metabolic rate, as well as heart and digestive function, muscle control, brain development, mood, and bone maintenance. Its correct functioning depends on clean, well-balanced nutrient intake and absorption. This is a key right here. We have to actually be able to absorb the food that we take in. Hydration no inflammation in the body, and a good supply of iodine from the diet. Your metabolic rate is the rate at which your body burns calories. Even when you're just sitting on the couch watching TV, our body is burning calories. This is considered your baseline or your basal metabolic rate, and in fact accounts for about 60 to 75% of the total amount of energy you burn while at rest, your organs and your essential biological functions are still working hard for you. Even So that's why we need energy in the form of nutrition, even when we're not being active or we're inactive. The energy used for things like eating, walking, and other physical activity is called thermogenesis. A few examples of specific metabolic effects of thyroid hormones include increased thyroid hormone levels stimulate lipid metabolism, which is fat metabolism. This is the process of using fat for energy or storing it in the body for later use. 
thyroid hormones also stimulate almost all aspects of carbohydrate and glucose metabolism. So in addition to metabolism, the thyroid plays a specific role in several other body functions. So thyroid hormones are necessary for healthy growth in children, as well as tissue regeneration in adults. Studies reveal normal levels of thyroid hormone are essential to the development of the fetal and neonatal brain. Thyroid hormones increase heart rate, cardiac contractuality, that's your heart being able to expand and contract, and cardiac output, that's when your heart con contracts. They also promote enhanced blood flow to many organs. Both decreased and increased concentrations of thyroid hormones lead to alterations in mental state. Too little thyroid hormone and the individual tends to feel mentally sluggish, while too much can induce anxiety and nervousness. Normal reproductive behavior and physiologic physiology are dependent on having essentially normal levels of the thyroid hormone. Hypothyroidism in particular is commonly associated with infertility. There are numerous natural techniques you can utilize to help boost the health and function of your thyroid gland. Before going on, does anyone have questions so far? Please jot them down and we will cover them. <clears throat> excuse me, in the Q&A on the Sagebrush Wellness Facebook page. So let's move on. Let's look at some of the things that can cause thyroid imbalance. So one of the biggest players that I see in my clients is stress. So stress is, stress is a normal part of life, right? You know, we all have stress. However, more people are experiencing higher levels of stress which can wreak havoc on our health. So living in a constant state of fight or flight can tax the adrenal glands, which can suppress the hypothalamus and pituitary glands, both of which directly, remember what we talked about in the beginning, both of which directly influence the thyroid function. This is an interconnected piece that I don't want you to miss. Our thoughts matter. How we think about our life matters. So find ways to minimize stress through calming activities like meditation, deep breathing, gratitude journaling, nature walks, running, whatever it is that really speaks to you and you're able to just turn off or unplug, check out whatever it is that you like to, you know, how you like to term it. That being able to just unplug and your body to just know you're okay, you're at rest. That's really important. So get some sleep. The potter requires sleep for overall health and healing. However, thyroid conditions can impact sleep patterns, which lead to adverse health effects. So adults need from seven to 10 hours each night. If they are actually some of my clients when they're in the recovery phase can easily sleep for 10 to 12 hours. Their bodies are so run down. So keep in mind, if you miss a few hours, you can't catch up later. Missed sleep is lost forever. But here's some tips. If you have trouble sleeping, try eating dinner at least three to four hours before bed. Have a cup of calming herbal tea and dab a few drops of lavender essential oils on the bottoms of your feet. It's very common for sleep to be disrupted between 1 and 3 a.m. when the digestive system is not working well. It may feel like you just wake up and you really don't know why. So you get up and you go to the bathroom and you crawl back in bed and sometimes it's easy to go back to sleep and sometimes it just doesn't happen no matter how many sheep you count. <laughs> so being able to use these cues from your body and understand what you can do to support your sleep can be hard and may need some investigation. And this is where I provide education around what is happening in your body so you can make good decisions for yourself. Physical activity is excellent for assisting in hormone production. If you're experiencing a sluggish metabolism, shoot for about uh, 30 minutes a day of low intensity exercise. Moving the large muscle groups in your body is especially effective. 
yoga, swimming, jogging, these are all excellent options. But if you're not up to that high level of exercise, do something simple like taking a walk or gardening. Just get movement into your day. To help slow your heart rate and reduce anxiety, <clears throat> practice daily calming activities such as yoga, we talked about that, or Tai Chi. All right, I want to really look at sugar and alcohol. Eliminating sugar and alcohol is huge, as well as gluten is huge for allowing your thyroid to rebalance. These three things wreck absolute havoc on your body and your thyroid. These foods cause inflammation, weight gain, and sugar issues. If you have a sweet tooth, try some fresh fruit, preferably berries. You'll be surprised how quickly your taste buds will adapt to the natural sweetness. Please be aware of hidden sugar and gluten in packaged foods and condiments and sauces. Make sure to check your, the ingredients list and avoid products that have added sugar and gluten. All right, these are some, we talked about some foods that we wanna avoid. Now let's talk about the foods we want to bring in. So a diet rich in essential vitamins and minerals such as selenium, iodine, zinc, thiamine, B12, and vitamin D can help support your thyroid and reduce inflammation. So fill your plate with dark leafy greens, quality fats, and clean protein sources. To know exactly what your body needs, it's a good idea to get some basic blood work. I provide a very comprehensive blood chemistry analysis for my clients that helps them to clarify what systems in their bodies are struggling. We use basic blood work like a CMP or a CBC, and we're able to see if the detoxification pathways are not working well, if there are clues that an individual may be struggling with inflammation, food sensitivities, toxicity, or even parasites. If we need more extensive testing, I can facilitate that as well. You can also test out incorporating more sea vegetables like seaweed into your diet. In fact, just one dried sheet of dried seaweed contains well above the daily recommended value of iodine. And if you're not up for that, a more palate-friendly palate choice may be kelp sprinkles. Those you can find just about anywhere in the section of the store that has salt. A handful of Brazilian nuts can contain more than your daily recommended value of selenium, which can kickstart the production of active thyroid hormones. One egg contains about 20% of your daily recommended value of selenium and 15% of your daily recommended value of iodine. Garlic is thyroid friendly because it supports blood sugar metabolism and can fight inflammation. Lentils are an excellent source of plant-based protein, but they can also provide iron to the body. Low iron levels have been linked to poor thyroid function. There's so much more there that I could talk about, but I won't. <laughs> Uh, clean red meats are a great source of B vitamins that are critical for normal hormone production. Metabolism and processing used hormones to be excreted from the body. Just a side note, when you have your next blood work, ask for serum iron as well as ferritin to be tested. If you're low in iron, there's usually a reason, such as there may be inflammation in the digestive tract that is preventing uptake of iron that is coming in as food. It can be a clue that your body is protecting you. It can also be a clue that your body is protecting you by keeping iron low if there's a simmering infection in your body. In this case, the ferritin may be a bit high. The best thing you can do when planning a meal is to limit dietary stress, which is caused by eating foods that create inflammation, sensitivity, or an allergic response. Another thing you want to avoid is foods that create a spike or rapid fluctuation in your blood sugar. So this is a very easy tip, and this is something I've seen work wonders for my clients. 
have between 20 and 30 grams of protein first thing in the morning. It will really, really help balance that blood sugar and give you some steady, slow burning energy for especially the beginning of your day and then into the afternoon. If you think you have food sensitivities, you can do a simple blood spot test using a kit that's shipped to your home. I can help facilitate this for you if you like. Many times we already know if a food or group of foods doesn't feel good in your body. Another clue that a food is not good for you is if you feel tired or fatigued or need a nap after eating. Really notice into that. If you need to, keep a food journal so you can pinpoint what foods are affecting you negatively. You wanna stay away from foods that contain toxins or chemicals that can trigger the immune responses. Stay away from unhealthy fats. And I want you to give, um, I want to give you a, a link right here to find a really great lit list of the good and bad oils or fats. So you can go to www.thechalkboardmag.com backslash Dr. Hyman good fat bad fat. It's an excellent list of the fats that your body can break down well. All right. With a few strategic changes, you can eliminate dietary stress. So eliminate, and notice I said eliminate processed foods or packaged foods. Have complete meals in your day and eliminate snacking. Opt for a natural form of salt, like unrefined sea salt or Himalayan pink salt. Incorporate, incorporate more good fats like olive oil, avocados, and healthy nuts into your diet. Avoid eating too much in one sitting. Really listen to your body. When you're no longer hungry, stop eating. Give your body a 10 to 12 hour break. Usually this is overnight from eating. Drink at least 48 to 60 ounces of water per day. Front loading the water intake before 4 p.m. will minimize getting up in the night for trips to the bathroom. All right, I wanna talk with you just briefly about some of the disruptors, the endocrine disruptors that are so common. So these endocrine disruptors are chemicals that can interfere with the body's endocrine system and produce adverse developmental, reproductive, neurological, and immune effects in humans. So endocrine disruptors are chemicals that mimic our hormones. So when this occurs, the chemical disruptor actually interferes with the messages our hormones are trying to send to ourselves. So just really listen into that. When this occurs, the chemical disruptor interferes with the messages our hormones are trying to send to our cells. It really messes with our bodies. So there's a wide range of substances, both natural and man-made, that cause endocrine disruption, including pharmaceuticals. So I'm gonna give you um, a link to find a really great list of these disruptors. So go to www.ewg.org and research Dirty Dozen List Endocrine Disruptors. So just kind of to run quickly through some of them, endocrine disruptors may be found in many everyday products, including plastic bottles, metal food cans, detergent, flame retardants, some foods, toys, cosmetics, and pesticides. To reduce exposure to endocrine disruptors, choose things like glass containers over plastic containers, um, drink filtered water, buy organic produce, buy locally sourced meats that have been raised on pasture. Additionally, opt for non-toxic natural bath and beauty products, household cleaners, and laundry detergents. So gals, I just wanna pop in here and say that, you know, we use makeup and cream and all kind of stuff on, on our bodies. That's great, right? But really know that our skin is like a giant mouth. And to be really honest with you, if you're not ready to eat it, whatever it is you're putting on your skin, then you probably shouldn't put it on your skin, okay? It's just a great rule of thumb. 
All right. So I know I've given you like a ton of information. So um, if you want to, I can give you a list of the, um, the sources for this webinar that I used. But I want you to really, um, really know that I'm available for you for questions. So we've covered a ton of information. Information. If you have questions, please join me for the Q&A on the Sagebrush Wellness Facebook page. I'll be there live for the next 15 minutes. And in the comments thread, post your question and I'll answer them live. As you know, this class has been recorded and if you'd like a copy sent to you, please send your request to sagebrushwellness at gmail.com. Some of you might like to let the information sink in before you ask questions and that's great too. Um, you can always reach me at sagebrushwellness at gmail.com. So most of my clients don't have just one diagnosis. Addressing the thyroid as I've taught you in this webinar can, can really, it can change your world. It can change how you feel. But many times it's overwhelming to do this on your own. It can take some really careful investigation into why your body is struggling. If you're in that spot, this is, this is what I do. This is what I am uh, privileged to do, to do for my clients every day. Um, if you, so if you want to work with me individually, please give me a call at 406-595-2331 or email me at sagebrushwellness at gmail.com and we'll get going. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope this webinar has been informative, educational, and empowering. Your choices matter. My very best to you. Take care. Bye.